Hi friends, Marin with Into Mobile. We're at Build 2011 checking out Microsoft's Windows 8 platform. They're saying it's a bold reimagination of Windows and it's the future of computing for them. It's going to work on desktops, laptops, and tablets like this one here. Uh, we're not going to spend too much time on this tablet just because they said it's a developer preview and this version is never going to hit the market. But I, I like it, so I want to spend just a few minutes checking it out. You have your home button there, Windows button, 11.6 inch screen, 1366 by 738. Uh, inside second gen Intel i i5, you have your docking port here on this spine. You have a charging port. You have your HDMI out, volume rocker, your USB port, you have your headphone jack, top micro SD card, microphone. On this side you have your power unlock, portrait lock button, you have a SIM card slot there. This one comes with integrated 3G from AT&T. Nice backing on it, Samsung logo, clean, crisp. You have your camera there, a couple vents. It's actually pretty light, it's nice. And um, yeah, it's it's good. Kind of a shame it's not coming out. But that's not the important part about this. The important part is Windows 8 and the software and how it stacks up, particularly for tablets. So this is a cool little dock they gave us. All your docking needs there. Let's check it out. This is the lock screen. As I mentioned before, it's a it's a reinterpretation of Windows. A lot of emphasis on touch screen interfaces, big bold content. For those of you who played with Windows Phone 7 you will recognize a ton of the elements here. So let me pop in my password. And if you notice here's the keyboard. That's not my password, but it's the same sounds as the key as the virtual keyboard on Windows Phone 7. Alright, let me put that in. Alright, so here is Windows 8. For you Windows 7 users, this will look pretty familiar. A lot of tiles, a lot of live information on there. This one's actually updating. We have a weather, weather widget here. You can notice how, how quickly it responds. Very, very nice feel, look and feel to it. Uh, Microsoft made a big deal about how this is Windows 8. This isn't just some cute little UI layer that they're on there. This is a vital part of what they're trying to do with this platform. And even though it'll work with a standard keyboard and mouse interface, you know, you can obviously tell that they put a lot of effort into touchscreen. So what that means is that there's also a few system-wide gestures that uh, people using capacitive tablet will have to learn. For example, you can swipe quickly on an app and then you see that it brings up this contextual menu. So this is a stock widget. And then there you go. So I just made it bigger and then I can make it smaller again if I want to do that. Uh, like, whoop. like with Windows 7 you can easily move these apps. It's, it's a little weird when I'm holding a camera but you can move them just like that, rearrange them. You can do a lot of fast, fast flipping. They got a semantic zoom where you can pinch to zoom and it brings it out. Um, let's look at the user tile up here. That's me. Uh, once you're ideally you can you can log in to your to your user account and then it'll bring all your apps with you. So let's take a photo. It's hot. Done. Cool. So that's us. Let's get back to the home screen. So let's uh, let's hop into IE10. So here's Into Mobile. Awesome. And if you notice all the all the uh, Chrome is gone. The URL bar, it's just all content here. That's that's what they're doing with all of these apps. It's actually going to be big push for sort of an Apple-like model where it's just the app takes up the full screen. Nice browsing, responsive, pinch the zoom, bright. Oh, the screen's the screen's great too. So really shows up. But then you know how are you going to want or how do you navigate? So you just do a, a simple flick from the top or the bottom, swipe down, and then you notice here are your tabs up there, and down here is your URL bar. And then here are your frequently visited sites, and then you can also pin, pin programs to it. And then I might have mentioned it before, but this is, let's go into mobile. 
you know, very similar looking keyboard to what you have on Windows 7. The, uh, the sounds are the same. They're, they made a conscious effort to do that. And so we talked about the, or swiping from the right will also bring up not only your system information, but it'll bring up this, these keys that, which are calling charms. So this is throughout the whole system, within any app or from the home screen, just quick access to these core services. So you have search, this can search your computer, it can search the internet, you can use apps to search. You have share, this will, this doesn't work with this one, but if you go back to the browser, which I could do actually more efficiently, I'll show you that too. Share, this will integrate with other sharing sites, and it's not just a quick, like, URL web sharing link. There's a, they built in tools that'll let app makers create their own custom UI within there. And, I mean, it still falls within the Metro style guidelines. Start and get you to the start screen. Devices. This is for, you know, when you're plugging in, when you're plugging in devices, of course, and then settings. Start. All of that. So for those of you who are freaked out by all this change, you can just hit on the desktop icon and here you go. There's the windows you know and love. There you have your ribbon up there. It's, you know, very similar. Uh, good for, you know, keyboard, mouse interface, particularly for apps like Word, Excel, and Photoshop. But they made it clear that just think of desktop like another app. It's going to be the same full feature. You have your file system management. And they've done a better job of actually making this touch friendly, but it can only be... It can only be a certain amount, you know. But, let's say you want to go back. So, I went from here, it's a full screen app, that's great, but then how do you go back to the app you're at? You can hit the, you can hit the Windows key, you can go to the Start screen, or you just drag in from the left, and it'll bring up your old app. So that's, that's a new thing, but, okay, you know, this, the, the thing about Windows is that it's supposed to be a multitasking beast. What if I want to, oops, no, that's not what I want. What if I want my weather widget and, and then there you go, that's called snapping. So this is the browser over here. You can bring in other apps and have obviously run multiple apps at once. So I probably don't need this weather widget that big, so let's just resize it. And then there you go. So you're browsing and you have your weather widget and you know the weather is fine but I mean picture something like an IM or even a Skype or you know internet radio it's it's an interesting it's an interesting design aesthetic it's much cleaner I know I know I run a ton of apps when I'm using my Windows machine and it's not going to work with all of the existing apps right now only the metro style ones but I think developers are going to jump quickly jump on board because that you should. So quick look at Windows 8 on the Samsung tablet. I'm gonna have a lot more for you. We're gonna dive through each of these apps. But for right now, that's that's it. Thanks for watching. Well, actually, let's go into the store. And then you can kill that too. Microsoft's going to have their own app store with the metro style uh, with the metro style design doesn't look like it wants to load up right now but that one's still a ways away yeah there you go and then it's you know think of it like the app store the Mac app store where they're gonna you know they're gonna certify these apps and then they're gonna make sure that they're safe, secure, they fit into this design aesthetic. You can still download uh, regular, regular apps or non-metro style apps from third parties, so that's not going away at all. So that's a quick look, Windows 8 on the Samsung tablet at Build. Thanks for watching.